I'm Gerald MD, also known as Dr. Bones of Survival Top 50's Reader's Choice website, doomandbloom.net, with over a thousand articles, podcasts, and videos on medical preparedness. Together with my wife, Amy Alden, an advanced registered nurse practitioner, we're the authors of the 2017 Book Excellence Award winner in medicine, The Survival Medicine Handbook, now in its 700 page third edition, and the designer of an entire line of medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. Years ago, we began writing about medical preparedness as it relates to major disasters. If a catastrophe takes society to the brink, every family needs someone to step up and take responsibility for the health of their loved ones. And that someone may very well be you. Any event that takes us off the grid for any significant amount of time, well, that could lead to outbreaks of infectious disease, bad water, poorly prepared food, and gosh, all that stuff. In normal times, we depend on a modern medical system to prevent bad outcomes. But when that system no longer functions, deaths will occur that would otherwise be avoidable if antibiotics were available. For the citizen that assumes the role of medic in austere settings, obtaining a good quantity of antibiotics, however, is pretty problematic. Without these drugs, a family can expect deaths from infections at rates comparable to those seen in the 19th century. If you doubt this, consider the History Channel film After Armageddon. In it, a paramedic takes his family on the road after an apocalyptic event. During their travels, they meet a community that could use someone with medical training, and they join it to start a new life. All hands are needed, however, to grow food and perform other activities of daily survival. Our hero is assigned to duties to which he's not accustomed and ends up with a minor injury which becomes infected. Unfortunately, the medical supplies of the community are limited. They don't include antibiotics. He watches his infection spread over the next few weeks, and despite all his knowledge and training, the lack of antibiotics kills him. There had to be something that would prevent that happening in a real-life disaster, so we did research and we wrote about it. The first article we ever wrote about was our attempt to improve outcomes from bacterial disease off the grid. It discussed a new option well outside the conventional medical wisdom, aquarium and avian antibiotics. We utilize our dual experience raising fish and birds as a hobby, as well as, of course, practicing medicine, to evaluate veterinary medications. We found to our surprise that a number were identical in dosage and appearance to human drugs, in most cases down to the identification numbers on the capsules. These were available without a prescription, making them an accessible and valuable tool in the medical woodshed. We decided to educate the family medic about how to identify various infectious diseases and the medicines that cure them and their veterinary equivalents. We spread the word over the years in articles, videos, and podcasts. Now, all the information we've accumulated is in one book, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, The Layman's Guide to Available Antibacterials in Austere Settings. In Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, we discuss a lot of things, pretty much all you need to know. How bacteria cause disease, how the immune system works to fight infection, many different disease-causing organisms, telling bacterial versus viral disease, common infectious diseases, epidemic and pandemic diseases, how antibiotics work, different antibiotic families, how to use antibiotics wisely. Of course, we talk about issues with antibiotic resistance. And then we discuss individual antibiotics and the diseases that each one treats, down to dosing, side effects, allergies, pregnancy and pediatric considerations, just about anything you need to know for each drug. Uh, expiration dates, we talk about that, establishing an epidemic sick room, dealing with wound infections, wound care, supplies for the austere, medic to make them more effective in their job, and much, much more. A non-medical person having antibiotics on hand in disaster settings is considered pretty controversial by the conventional medical wisdom, and for good reason. Yet, if there is no ambulance coming to render aid or hospital to treat the sick, you may become the end of the line when it comes to the well-being of loved ones. Just as learning how to stop bleeding is important, learning about infection and the medicines that treat it will save lives in difficult times.
You won't regret having Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, the layman's guide to available antibacterials in austere settings in your survival library. It's now available on Amazon or at our medical supply store at store.doomandbloom.net. This is Joe Alton, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching.